Here's a really nice quality of life component, the option group. So let's come in here and we'll say Q-option-group. And then we're going to want some options inside of there. So let's say options is equal to options. And we'll do that in a second. And then we want to model something as well. So let's say V-model is equal to, and we'll model a car. Now I can come in here and say const car is equal to ref and import ref there. And let's set ref equal to, well, nothing by default is probably fine. And we want to see what that's going to look like. So I'll throw a pre-tag in here and display the current car that is selected. Next, we want some options. So let's say const options is equal to an array of objects for all of those options. And we want to have a label for all of the options. And this one could be Toyota. And then it also needs to have a value. So when this is selected, value is going to be set for car here. That's why the value is important. The label is just for displaying purposes. The value is actually what gets modeled behind the scenes. But I'll show you that in a moment. Toy Oda. And I've basically just done the same thing, but lowercase. Make sure I spell it correctly. Toy Oda. And we'll do a couple more as well. Another one is Volvo. First car I ever drove was a Volvo. We called it the gold car because it was gold. <laughs> We're not literally made of gold. It was actually this horrible kind of champagne color. But anyway, uh, Toyota, Volvo, and Subaru. Here we go. Subaru. Save it. And there we go. Those options show up. Let me just quickly show you what's going on here. We've set the options to the options that we have down here in this list. And then we've got car, which is being modeled so that when we select one, due to this pre-tag that we've got here, it's being spat out as the result. And notice that it is the lowercase version because that's what value has been set to. Okay, so when we click on Toyota, value is then set to this lowercase version of Toyota inside of our car variable. All right, let's see what else we can do. We can come in here and disable individual items by saying disable, set that equal to true. And now we can't click on Toyota, but Volvo and Subaru are going to work fine. Also, any other props that the underlying component, so in this case, we're using a Q radio component. That's what Quasar is using under the hood. Any other props that Q radio can take are going to be passed through inside of this object here. I'll show you what I mean by that. If I come in and say checked icon, which is by the way, a property on Q radio, we can set that equal to visibility to use the visibility icon. And then I can come in here and say unchecked icon and set that to visibility underscore off. And there we go. Now it's going to use this different icon. Let's get rid of disabled there. So how cool is that? And then in this case, you might have, for example, a const base options here, which is equal to an object. And let's throw these two inside of there. And then we can just spread this in here. One, two, three. One, two, three dots. What is going on there? I'm getting some weird auto completion. <laughs> there we go, base options. And I can copy paste that in both of these locations. Add in the comma. And it means that they're all going to take on these base options that I created there. And there we go. Pretty cool. But anyway, let's go back to a simpler example. I'll get rid of all of these. And scroll back up. We can also change the color of the options. Color is equal to green. And now when I select one of these, it's going to show up green. And another thing we can do is say keep color. So keep color is really cool because it means we can tell it's green. Notice that we get a green outline there before we even select an option. So if you want a little bit more color theming in your app, you might want to use this keep color attribute. We can also change the size. So let's set that equal to extra large. And I'll leave it on extra large for the rest of the video so that you can see it easily. We also have different types available to us. So at the moment, we're using radio checkboxes, but we can also use normal checkboxes. So check this out. Type is equal to checkbox. And this isn't going to work properly by default because checkboxes is going to expect an array. So let's come in here and change car, and I'll go Control D to select all of them and change it to cars, plural. And we'll make that an array by default. So now I can come in here and select all of these options as an array. Pretty cool. This will work for a toggle as well. So let's come up here and say 
toggle, and we basically get the same thing, but this time we have toggles. We can also change the side of the label, left dash label, and that means it's going to throw it onto the other side, so that might be something that you want. You can also say inline here, which means that rather than having all of our toggles stacked, they're all going to be in one line. And by the way, let's change this back to a checkbox. I think it just looks a little bit nicer. So inline's good to know about. And another thing we can do is make it dense. Now all dense does is it gets rid of a little bit of the padding there. So everything's a little bit closer together. So if I get rid of dense now, notice that they're just going to spread out a little bit. That's pretty much all that dense is doing. Another thing we can do is say disable and that's going to disable all of the options. So I did mention before that we can disable them individually by adding in disable here. However, you can also disable all of the options by adding it to the Q option group directly there. Okay, that's about it for the props. Let's come in and have a look at what slots we have available to us. We've actually only got two. The first one is label. So let's say hashtag label and we can accept the current option there. So let's say option and then I can just map the option straight back on by throwing it in like this, option.label. And then we just end up with the same thing there. Let me get rid of disable. There we go. So we've basically just done the same thing, but now we have control. So I can say control shift P wrap to wrap this and let's wrap it in a Q dash chip, save it. And now we've got chips as the label. And then we can change the color. So we could say, for example, color is equal to primary or maybe green so it's the same color as the checkbox save it and now we get a green colored chip and let's come in and say text dash color is equal to white there we go i think that looks pretty good let's get rid of inline yeah i think that's actually kind of cool that might be something you can experiment with in your app and another thing we can do is actually target specific labels so if i scroll down here we can use these values to target individual labels. So if I say label dash Toyota, I can target the Toyota slot. So check this out. Label dash Toyota. And now it's only going to target the Toyota slot, but I've spelled that wrong, Toyota. And it turns out that I was wrong about this. It's not actually the name of the label. It's actually the index of the label. So if I say dash one there, then it's index one, which is Volvo. If I were to say zero, then index zero in this case is Toyota. So this is actually an index. It's not referring to the value. Anyway, chances are you're not going to need that. Chances are you can just use label and then you can change things like the color of your label based off of something on the option. In fact, let me quickly show you that. Something you might wanna do is say, the color here is red, and then let's add one here, let's make it yellow. And then for the Subaru, we can make it gray. Save it, and now I can come up here, and for the color, I'll say option.color. And there we go, now they all come out as different colors. That looks a little bit gross though, so let's go back to a simpler example. All right, the last thing I want to show you is using this inside of a form. So let's grab it, Control Shift P, wrap, and I'm going to wrap this in a Q dash form component. Let's get rid of that pre tag. We don't need it anymore. And I'll come in here and say Q dash button. The type will be equal to submit so that it submits the form. And then we'll say label is equal to submit. Save it. There's our button. The next thing we need to do is add a name here. So the name is going to be equal to cars so that we have a name for the Q option inside of the form that we're going to submit. So let's save that. And now when I select a few and then press submit, we can see that they come up here in the query string. So that's about it, the Q option group component. See you in the next video.